Now then YouTube, I'm the Tough Man, and welcome back to part 2 of my guide to Thorncraft 5. I am going to be going through each and every single aspect that is involved in Thorncraft 5, including some of the old stuff that you guys already know about. So if you find something, I will try to get timestamps in here so that you can get to certain different parts of this Thorncraft 5 guide. In today's episode, guys, we're going to be going through basic information. We're going to be taking a look straight the way through this, and uh, I'm, I may be able to get all this done in one episode, but I'm really not sure how long this is going to take. So, let's go through some of the basic stuff that you will find on this tab uh, to start with. Well, when you start, you will have aspects of magic. This is a very important tab to go ahead and have a look at, because this will actually show you and discuss some of the different things that are in uh, Thorncraft. If you're new to Thorncraft, this is what the guide is going to be based on, guys. If you're new to Thorncraft, you're coming in at Thorncraft 5, I'm going to be explaining exactly how to work the book and so on and so forth. So you open this up and you see the aspects of magic. This will give you a brief description of aspects, what are primal aspects, what are compound aspects, and so on and so forth. Primal aspects, as there is six of them. There's Air, Terra, Ignis, Aqua, Ordo, and Peditio. You will also find out and about, guys, flux as an aspect in the world. Now, this is not something that you can necessarily tap into your wand, and I'll get more into that in the future, but um, just remember that there are six primal aspects. Compound aspects are made up of primal aspects. So, for example, in this case, it gives you Victus, which is a life, and it's actually made up of a combination of Terra and Aqua. You put them two together and you will get Victus. Now, going further on through this, guys, it's really, really important to note that Take a look at this. This is how you will get certain different aspects. Lux is made of air and ignis, whereas if you go forwards, you can see that there are certain things that, if I can manage to find one, um, there we go. Look, alienus is actually made from vacuous and tenebrae. Both of those are compound aspects. They're not primal aspects because they're not air or peditio or so on and so forth. They're actually compound aspects. So compound aspects can make even more complex compound aspects. And the best way to find out what makes what is by using this tab, especially at the moment where there is no updated version of the, um, the research helper from previous versions. If you don't know how to do research, I explained it in my first episode. So going from there, guys, um, the next thing is research and how you discover things. I already went through how to actually do research in the previous um, in, in the previous episode, but if you wanted to take a quick look through it, guys, and really read right into how you do your research, you can come into here and it will give you all of the different things that you will need to be able to understand what research is. So you can see here, hexagonal icons indicate secondary research. This is something I actually didn't cover in the first episode. Hexagonal ones, if we have a look in Thaumaturgy, are these ones right here. You don't need to actually research these, you can purchase them with XP. So keep that in mind guys. No longer in the past you have to use your aspect points, currently you have to use XP. So you will have to have some experience to be able to use to purchase these particular uh, researches. Now I'm not entirely sure if you can go into the configs and set it so that you can just do this with every single one of them. I don't know if that's a thing within Thorncraft 5 just yet, and uh, if I do find out, guys, I will let you know. But, moving on, you can see the Thorminomicon, a repository of knowledge, and this just shows you how to make a Thorminomicon. Now, when you spawn in the world, you won't have a Thorminomicon on you, so you won't be able to read how to create one. If you don't know how to create one, it's simply making an iron-capped wooden wand, which you can do with a stick and also some um, iron nuggets in like a, a hat shape, uh, in a helmet shape. Make two of those, uh, the caps, the iron caps, put them on the ends of the sticks in a diagonal formation and you can get yourself an iron-capped wooden wand. To be able to use this, uh, just go ahead and right click on a bookshelf in the world and you will get yourself a Thorminomicon. To actually fill up your wand with aspect points, again I explained how Aura worked in the last video, so if you're not sure, go back and have a look at that one. But you just hold it in your hand, um, depending on what kind of wand it is, and I'll get to that in the future as well. Uh, you can hold it in your hand and it will suck in the Aura from around you and it will give you aspect points in your uh, wand. 
and that's what's used to create things in the future. Knowledge fragments. Now these are interesting. In your travels, you might uh, happen upon fragments of ancient and lost knowledge. When used, they will grant you a small amount of experience. They might have other uses as well. Now what the other uses are is, if you go into the research thing here, if you have a, if a research paper, I said, I said to you in the, uh, in the last video, you get a pool of aspect points that you can use to combine with each other to go ahead and find your way through all of the research. Now, if you so happen to run out of primal aspects, you can go ahead and use the uh, knowledge fragments and that will give you more of those aspect points at the start there so you, you can further on that research if you just so happen to run out of a particular primal you can hope that when you use that you will get the right primal for that so you can use them for that as well um, what else do we have? Well, auras and nodes goes through exactly the same stuff that I explained in the last episode, but it does go into really good detail on the different types of nodes that there is kicking around the place. Astral nodes, sinister nodes, hungry nodes, pure nodes, tainted nodes, unstable nodes. All of these do different things to the aura that is out and about and around the place and how it affects replenishing the Vs in the surrounding aura. So, you know, it's worth a, it's worth a read, guys. It is definitely worth a read. So going back, now this will you will have to actually find this, you will have to research this. Same with warp, flux and all things bad. This goes into detail on what warp and flux is. Warp is something that it, when, when you're researching stuff and you research forbidden knowledge, something dark about Thorncraft, when you research that forbidden knowledge, you gain warp through that. Now warp eventually accumulates and accumulates and accumulates and ends up in different status effects and different things happening to your character um, on random intervals depending on how warped you are. Uh, flux is the physical manifestation really of warp. Warp affects the player whereas flux affects the environment. And if you're doing bad things to the environment, flux is a thing that will happen. And you saw that in the previous episode when I showed you um, a chunk with a little bit more flux and it starts to actually taint the land around it. And that is a physical manifestation and that is what flux means. Um, the, it goes into plants and trees, magical vegetation. Now, great wood um, trees are absolutely massive. They're, they're like four by four trunks and they are huge. Now these can be used for various different recipes and so on and so forth within Thorncraft and these can be spawn, uh, can spawn around the place. Silverwood trees are something that spawns often in magical biomes but will also spawn here, there and, and everywhere. They will spawn rarely out in the world. Now it's very, very rare to actually get a silverwood sapling. I don't know if that thing has changed between Thorncraft 4 and 5, but I believe that it is still rare to get a silverwood sapling. And that's because of how powerful they can be. Because sometimes, and again, I'm just going by Thorncraft 4 knowledge here, I'm pretty sure it's the same as Thorncraft in Thorncraft 5. These will actually spawn sometimes with an aura node inside of them. So it's worth noting. Shimmer leaves um, actually spawn underneath silverwood trees. Cinder pearls are in the desert. Um, you can find them in there, and they will actually give you blaze powder. Vish rooms can be found in the magical forests uh, out and about the place, but don't stand on these guys. You will end up getting ill, um, so be very, very careful. You can make vish room soup, which I believe you can actually eat with no ill effects. Now, going back over here, guys, you've also got enchantments. Now, these are different enchantments that Thorncrafts add, uh, Thorncraft adds into the game. And these have been here for quite a few versions now. You can get haste, which applied to footwear, and all types of increases the wearer's land speed. The higher the enchantment level, the greater the speed bonus granted. Repair. This enchantment slowly repairs the durability of items by drawing Vs from ones in your inventory. The Vs cost is determined by the value of the item. The higher the level of the enchantment, the quicker this takes place. The enchantment can only be applied to items made with Thorncraft and not, and even then, not all of them. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. Oz just basically explains exactly what I said in the last episode um, with regards to infused stone and so on and so forth. There is no infused stone anymore. You will get shards that generate around the world depending on how high a particular aspect is in that aura. So say for example you come across a, ch uh, a chunk which is really high in the air aspect. If you dig around in the caves underneath there, you will find that there is 
air shards that are actually growing on the walls of the caves and so on and so forth. Now, going from there as well, and I think that you've got to actually unlock infusion to be able to do this first, is the crystal farmer. You can actually make crystals and place them on the ground so that they can grow. And again, I think it's got something to do with how much aura there is, depends on how fast they grow. So if we take a quick look at that, guys, you've made a couple of discoveries that have given you the ability to turn beast shards into plantable beast crystals on stone. What is more, you can now pluck a single shard from a crystal growth without having to break it. Simply right click on it with your wand. And again, like I said in the last episode, be very, very careful. It shows two shards right here, but if I actually use it, and I'm going to use it on, well, I might as well use it on the terror right here. If I use it on here you'll see that it actually just gets rid of it. There isn't two shards there, so be very, very careful when you are using it and you don't want to actually go ahead and, and pluck all of these from there. The other thing to note is the peck. Now, the peck are creatures that you'll find in the magical biome, the magical forest biome, that look a little bit like this. And you can actually trade um, valuables with them and then eventually they will trust you enough to say, you know what? I can do some trading with you and you can go in there and you can actually get things from Peck from Thorncraft that you won't be able to get anywhere else. So that is something to keep in mind. It's also worthy to note guys that uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it's still the same with magical biomes and stuff where you get um, mana beans. I don't know because I haven't actually seen anything about mana beans in here but I would presume that they're still there, although I cannot actually say for certain. I will have to go out and find a magical biome and be able to show you guys that. So, that is going to be it for the um, basic information tab. Now, I've gone through everything that I can. If you've got any questions or anything like that, guys, do not hesitate to put them in the comment section below and I will get to them as soon as I possibly can. This is a beta version that I am using. If something changes, guys, and um, something gets added onto here, of course, I will be doing an update video later on so that you guys will be kept in the knowledge about how Thorncraft 5 works. So this is the basic information tab. If you've enjoyed this, guys, please go ahead and leave a like and uh, I will be... In, uh, I will be back with the next episode where I'm going to go into Thaumaturgy. There's quite a lot of stuff in here, guys, uh, so keep that in mind. Oh, you can also scroll in and out, and there's also a search function on the bottom left-hand side as well. Um, I'll make sure that I say that in the next episode as well so that nobody's just turned off without having to uh, realise that. There is also some new items in here, but again, that's going to be in the next episode couple of episodes. I don't think I'm going to be able to go through all of these. Maybe, uh, but I don't think I am. I will see you guys in the next episode though. Again, if you've enjoyed it, please go ahead and leave a like and I will see you next time. Till then, I've been the top and as always, stay safe.